Are you looking to optimize your supplements for bone health? Today, I'm gonna to discuss a new product that we've added to our list of frequently suggested supplements. This one's called Lactoferrin. We're gonna review the available literature and discuss my own experience clinically that really pushed us to make this switch. If you've had a good or bad experience with Lactoferrin, we'd love to hear about it. Please leave it in the comments on YouTube. All right, so I'm gonna give you the full recipe for how we use this product, including the dose and the brand. Now I have no financial relationship with this product, so this is purely just evidence-based information. Before I do, let me give you a little bit of background. So many of you probably have not heard of lactoferrin. Lactoferrin is a naturally occurring protein that is found in the milk of most mammals, including humans. It's also particularly abundant in the early milk after a mammal gives birth called colostrum, and that is not a coincidence. So while lactoferrin is present in cow, in goat, in sheep milk and in human milk, it is not present in anything that's been pasteurized. So the protein gets broken down in the heating and the pasteurization process. So lactoferrin is only available in raw milk if someone has access to raw milk. So lactoferrin, when you read about this, you'll find that lactoferrin is thought to be antibacterial. It's antiviral. It helps to regulate iron absorption. It helps to regulate iron metabolism. It's anti-inflammatory. It improves immune function. It improves gut health. It's kind of like a panacea. Now, whenever anything is sold as a panacea, I raise a red flag and I say, show me the evidence. What's really compelling is that there is quite a bit of evidence for lactoferrin. I'm not going to review it all. But what I do see is that there's a lot of evidence for lactoferrin on bone health. And that's what I really want to review today. I got introduced to lactoferrin through a product called Milk Basic Protein, or MBP. And in that video, we discussed that MBP as an intervention has been studied, and it does increase bone mineral density on its own. And half of MBP by volume is lactoferrin, the other half is lactoproxidase. So before I get to the dosing and the products, let me tell you a little bit about why I think lactoferrin is probably better than MBP alone. Okay, so let's get into the studies that actually show that lactoferrin is a really compelling product to use for bone health. So this first one I'm gonna show here, this is a 2023 review paper, and it's specifically looking at lactoferrin as a target for future therapeutics. So you see this kind of research when a company or an industry in, in general is looking at a product as something that they can potentially patent and you know potentially make a drug out of. So you see these kind of like blanket approaches looking at all the available literature. What they found here is that lactoferrin regulates function of osteoblasts, so those are the cells that make bone, chondrocytes, those are the cells that make cartilage and also that can turn into part of the matrix, and then osteoclasts, so osteoclasts are the cells that break down bone, and then mesenchymal stem cells, and the stem cells are the things that can become other things like osteoblasts and osteoclasts, although from different cell lines. The paper discusses all the detailed mechanisms and I won't bore you with that, but What's interesting is that they are the same as some of the pharmaceutical mechanisms that are out there. Now, what's really cool about lactoferrin is that like most natural products, it works on both sides of the equation. So a lot of the pharmaceutical approaches are gonna work simply on one side. In fact, they all work pretty much on one side, meaning that the anti-resorptive drugs will work on the osteoclast side, the, the anabolic drugs work on the osteoblast side, but natural products tend to work on both. So lactoferrin will work on both osteoclast and osteoblast, it's kind of cool. The conclusion of this study says that lactoferrin can rescue dysregulated bone remodeling and osteoporotic conditions by stimulating bone formation and suppressing bone resorption. Now, that's a pretty powerful statement because we don't see drugs that can do that. And so if there were a drug that could do both and improve bone metabolism overall, it would be a showstopper of a pharmaceutical. And then I looked at all the animal research that supported basically coming out of that one review paper. So I'm just gonna point these out. So the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth studies that we reviewed, these are all animal studies. But what's cool is that they all showed benefits in an animal model. So before I get into the human studies, because there are some human studies, just a quick reminder that if you haven't gone through our masterclass already and you're struggling to try to figure out what is the right combination of stuff for you, what's the right approach to help you to improve your bone health and potentially reverse your osteoporosis, consider our masterclass. The masterclass is totally free. If you're on YouTube, look for the link in the description below. And it is our opportunity to talk to you about how we go through building an osteoporosis program. And we'll talk about all the updates to our program and we'll have some time for Q&A. All right, so what about the human studies? So the human studies actually look 
pretty good. And there's some issues that I'll talk about. But in 2010, there were two studies that were published, and these were on our population of interest. We'll say it that way. So this was a study that looked at 38 postmenopausal women, and they were looking at lactoferrin specifically for inflammation and bone health for six months. So that's pretty awesome. Now, what I don't like about this study is that they chose to use a, a combination of ribonuclease and lactoferrin. And, and so what does that mean? Ribonuclease is something you can attach to something. And so they used a ribonuclease enriched lactoferrin. Why would they do that? Because that is a unique molecule and a unique molecule can be patented. So clearly this is, again, this is a, a company looking to produce something that they could then patent and obviously make money on. That's how the industry works. So we have to take this a little bit for what it is, but this ribonuclease enriched lactoferrin at 225 milligrams a day, they use that as an intervention plus calcium. And then the placebo group had just calcium. What they noticed is the inflammatory markers changed in the correct direction in both sides, meaning that the pro-inflammatory markers went down and the anti-inflammatory markers went up. And there's markers that you can measure for both of those, which is pretty cool. They also noticed this thing called rank ligand, which you've heard me talk about in reference to some drugs. Rank ligand went down, which is what you see with the drug. And then also CRP, which is a marker for inflammation, also went down. So can we say that this ribonuclease and rich lactoferrin is the same thing as lactoferrin? N not, it's not. Can we say that the effect is coming from the lactoferrin or the ribonuclease? We can't, but it is certainly pushing us in the direction to say that there is probably something relevant here. What's also good about this study though, is that it starts to give us a dose. Like all the animal studies are going to use doses all over the map and how do you relate that to a human but these are human studies and we're using a clear dose so we can pull out a number from there which i'll show you in a minute all right so then the next study is also from the same group or i would assume it's from the same group because it's 38 postmenopausal women using ribonuclease and rich lactoferrin so probably the same study group but anyway they were looking at bone turnover markers specifically and they did you know dosage for six months so what they found is that there was indeed decreased bone breakdown in increased bone building. So again, it's working on both sides of the equation, which we really like. So those are the only two human studies we could find. Now, is that enough human studies to use it? Well, I think the answer is yes, and here's why. Because lactoferrin occurs naturally. I mentioned earlier that you find it in raw dairy, and we know that raw dairy has a very different impact than does pasteurized dairy. One of the reasons to consume raw dairy, if you can find it and, and deem it to be coming from a safe source. So, Lactoferrin is in colostrum, it's in raw dairy, and it's available as an over-the-counter supplement. So let's assume that you either don't tolerate dairy, don't have access to raw dairy, or just wanna consume the supplement. Where do we get it from? So the two companies that we use right now in our practice, and again, no relationship with these companies, but that's Allergy Research Group, or ARG, and Gero. Both of these companies have a product that is the lactoferrin. Um, the ARG group uses a K in it just to make it look different. It has a reasonably high dose and Gero has a, a similar product. Their doses are around 250, 350 milligrams, something like that in each of a serving. And then if you look at the study, that 225 milligrams in the ribonuclease enriched lacto lactoferrin, if you do the math on which of the products is heavier in there and what's the combination, it's likely to be about 200 milligrams of lactoferrin. So somewhere between that 200, 300, 400 milligrams seems to be what the researchers were thinking would should be studied. If you think about how much is in raw milk, this gets a little bit super physiologic though, because in raw milk, there's about 20 to 25 milligrams per cup of milk. So to get to 200 to 300 or 400 you know, milligrams of lactoferrin, you're talking about 10, 20, 30 cups of milk, which is obviously a lot of milk. So I also wanted to say this one thing, which is that some of these products like ARG and Gero, I think both of them are available on Amazon. I strongly discourage people from buying supplements on Amazon or from big box stores because there have been multiple studies showing how the things that are in the bottle are not necessarily what's supposed to be in the bottle. And also there's no guarantee that those have been stored appropriately in a temperature controlled warehouse. How long have they been there? What is the, you know, the true expiration date, et cetera. So strongly encourage people to buy products from companies like Fullscript, which is an online dispensary that a lot of doctors will use. We use it in our practice as well. If you don't have access to Fullscript by any of the doctors that you know, and you want to have access to our Fullscript without being a patient, consider joining our HealthSpan Nation, which is our membership community where people are are up leveling each other, visiting us once a week for a live Q&A with myself or a team member. And they have access to both our full script, which has a lot of these products in it, but also 
to other discounts that we give to our members and patients. The cost of, or the cost difference in those discounts can offset the cost of the membership in a second. So something to consider, and you can check out links for that in the description, or go to our website, optimalhumanhealth.com, and you can find that there. So this was a review of Lactoferrin. And if you like this, consider this video, the three best supplements to build bone health, or this video, the best supplements for building muscle mass, all of them obviously on supplements. So remember that osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning.